Hello and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Today we're going to talk about the At Games Legends Ultimate Mini. A huge thank you to At Games for sending this machine for review and guide development. The Legends Ultimate Mini is a hybrid of the Legends Ultimate and the Legends Pinball and allows the display to be rotated between vertical or horizontal orientations. In this video, we'll assemble the machine, take a look at all its features, and of course, play some games. Let's get started. Let's talk about the features of the At Games Legends Ultimate Mini Arcade Machine. It has an 18-inch high-definition LCD monitor. The display can be rotated in horizontal or vertical orientations. It has 150 built-in licensed games. The pinball kit is included, and it has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, a one-player arcade-style control panel, and the dimensions are 19.4 by 19.3 by 60.9 inches. I do want to mention if you go to wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash ALUM, it'll take you to the At Games Legends Ultimate Mini Guide. This guide covers the important aspects of the Legends Ultimate Mini, and unlike a video, can be easily updated as new features and improvements are introduced. Let's go ahead and open the box to the Legends Ultimate Mini. The exterior of the box may look a bit different than what you see here. However, the contents will be exactly the same. The box at the top contains the power adapter and pinball button assemblies. And of course, below is our Legends Ultimate Mini control panel. For the larger items, such as the bar top and panels, you may find it easier to lay the box down on its side and carefully slide the pieces out. Here's the bar top. And here are the panels. The anti-tipping kit is useful if you want to secure the machine to your wall. The screws and hardware that we'll be using to assemble the unit. Now well, let's go ahead and get everything out of the box. The included manual does a very good job of describing each of the components and how they are assembled. On the left we have the main parts, the screws and related hardware, and of course the power adapter. Also included is the anti-tipping kit and suction cup for removing the bezel. We'll begin the assembly by installing all 16 of the cam bolts into both sides of the panel. Next, I'll take the two boards with the grooves going down the middle and go ahead and install the cam locks. The small arrow on the cam lock should be facing outward. And we'll simply insert each into the boards. I prefer starting with the two boards with the grooves, which are assembled towards the base of the machine. I'll go ahead and slide them in here and tighten them up. And repeat the same for the other side. A flathead screwdriver actually works a little better than a Phillips head. I did try both. You'll then install the panel E at the groove slots towards the base of the machine. Now, carefully align and install the opposite side panel through the eight holes in the boards and rotate the cam bolts to tighten all eight bolts. Now we'll slide back panel G into the grooves at the very back and do the same for panel F. Then at the back of panel G, all you have to do is insert this one screw at the top and the two screws on the bottom. And then go ahead and flip the machine up and insert the two wooden dowels in this location. Place the support panel over the dowels and go ahead and install the two screws in these two locations. Then tighten them up with a Phillips head screwdriver. Then carefully set the bar top across the back portion of the cabinet. There are three cables we'll need to plug into the back of the control panel. The control bus or output cable, the USB 2.0 connection, and the 12 volt power input. Well now let's just go ahead and plug it in. I'll go ahead and speed through the actual cable connections, but I do want to let you see how everything plugs up. Then you just slide it in place. There are eight screws we need to install two on the top and three on each side. So we'll go ahead and put the screws in on the top of the control panel. And once we're done with that, we'll go ahead and put three screws on each side. And the last portion of the assembly is installing the pinball buttons. There are no cables to connect here. It uses spring-loaded connectors. So you just attach it and tighten the screws and we are essentially done with the assembly. I'll pan around the machine so you can get a good look at it and the artwork. So you got Fix-It Felix, Space Invaders, and Star Wars on the side. Looks pretty nice. That's a nice looking cabinet. 
And lastly, one thing you'll want to do is go ahead and remove the four screws in each of the corners of the machine. I loosen each of them so it won't take me long. And then you want to go ahead and peel off this plastic covering over the bezel. And then there's also a plastic cover over the LCD monitor, which you'll want to remove. Now I'll put the bezel back on. On the back, you do have an Ethernet port, which is great for streaming games and, of course, your power input. Let's go ahead and plug it up. And now we'll power on the machine for the first time. In the next segment, I'll show you how easy it is to rotate from portrait to landscape. And we'll take a look at what the Legends Ultimate Mini has to offer. In the upper left of the control panel, you have your HDMI input, your OTG connection, USB 3.0 port, the channel button to switch inputs, and your volume down and volume up button. On the very far right here, we have the power button, of course your A, B, X, Y, and C and Z button, and the joystick. And in the upper left here, we have the rewind button to rewind the game, your menu or at games button, and player one. The buttons feel pretty good. They're slightly concave, which is something I personally like. I'll show you how easy it is to rotate from portrait or vertical mode over to landscape. Just remove the four screws in each corner. Use the suction cup to remove the bezel. And I'll just set it off to the side here. The panel itself is etched with V mode over here on the left and H mode on the right. So to turn it horizontal, just put horizontal in the upper right. And the machine automatically detects the change and goes ahead and begins to rotate the display for you. Then we simply rotate the bezel in the same orientation and reinstall the four screws. And now we can navigate the menuing system or play our games in horizontal mode. So how does this work, you may ask? Well, if you look at the back of the monitor itself, you'll see a small magnet, which is used to trigger this switch. And that's how the machine knows which orientation you have it set for. When comparing the Legends Ultimate Mini with the Legends Ultimate, the Mini is about two-thirds the width and about four inches shorter. It includes 150 games versus 300 available on the Legends Ultimate. The Legends Mini includes one stick with buttons, while the ALU, or At Games Legends Ultimate, includes two sets of sticks, buttons, spinners, and a trackball for only about $100 more from Sam's Club. I only own one arcade one up for comparison, and that's the Star Wars cabinet. And with the riser installed, the two machines are nearly identical in height, with the Legends Mini just slightly taller. The Legends Gamer Mini control panel is a drop in replacement for the Legends Ultimate Mini. However, what I personally would like to see is a Gamer Mini with a trackball. Playing vertical games such as Centipede, Millipede, and many others would be great with this machine. Let's compare the difference between the Legends Ultimate Mini and the Legends Ultimate in the horizontal pixel perfect mode. For the Mini, the game area is roughly 15 inches. Now we'll switch over to the Legends Ultimate in horizontal mode, and those measurements are roughly 19 inches. We'll do the same in vertical mode on the Mini. It's around 13 inches, and on the Legends Ultimate, it's roughly 16 inches. That is, the Legends Ultimate with its 24 inch display versus 18 inches on the Mini will give you around 4 inches more gameplay area in horizontal pixel perfect mode and about 3 inches more in vertical mode. However, if you don't mind a pixel perfect aspect ratio, there are options that will fill the entire size of the display, though they appear stretched and not something I personally would use. If you want to install additional applications or pinball tables, you're going to need a USB flash drive. Go ahead and insert it into the USB 3.0 port and navigate over to the Settings tab. From there, select Flash Drive X. If it's a new drive, you'll need to format it, then mount the drive to make it available to the machine. At that point, you can install any applications or pinball volumes that you've purchased. From the Games tab, you can highlight a game and press the Menu or at games button which will allow you to filter the game list. For example, let's filter by arcade games and play a few of them. We'll start off with Bad Dudes vs Dragon Ninja. Once you select a game, you'll see a screen that shows you the controls that are available for the game. You can then press the menu button and you have even more options available such as your save state or maybe you want to quit the game 
your advanced configuration, button mapping, display mode. You can set it for center, fit, fill, and there's also pixel perfect if you prefer a perfect aspect ratio, which is sometimes a good idea. Anyway, I'll leave it at fit and I'll set the scan lines to horizontal. And now let's check it out. And now we'll take a look at Earth Defense Force. Using either a free or paid arcade net account, you can also stream games to your machine. We'll take a look at some brief gameplay of Andro Dunos being played over a Wi-Fi connection. Keep in mind an Ethernet connection will provide a better gameplay experience. But of course you aren't limited to just the included games. You can install CoinOps X and play thousands of additional games just using a USB thumb drive. At the time of this video, up and down doesn't work properly when the display is in vertical mode. Hopefully that'll be fixed soon. Now we'll rotate the screen and check out some games using the vertical orientation on the Legends Ultimate Mini. The first game we'll look at is Burger Time. I did rotate the camera so you can get a better look. The next game we'll look at is Tron. Normally you need a spinner, but At Games was clever by mapping the A and C buttons to rotate and B to fire. Let's check it out. The display mode is set to center with horizontal scan lines. Check out Fix It Felix Jr. Now we'll switch over to some pinball gameplay. To launch a ball, simply pull back on the joystick. Now we'll play Black Bell 2018 from Zakaria Volume 1. Obviously, the ability to rotate the display in a portrait mode provides a much better experience playing pinball tables over the Legends Ultimate. Karate is not just offense. You must depend. Now we'll take a look at one of my favorite tables, Frontline, from Tato, Volume 1. Now we'll switch over to App Store X and download Tato Volume 2. Playing another great table, Zookeeper. And now I'll submit my not-so-high score to the leaderboard. 
You can also easily connect other devices such as the Super Console X or a PC to the Legends Ultimate Mini. A next generation device I recently reviewed and wanted to test is the Palkitty X18S running Android 11. This device provides great performance for consoles such as the Dreamcast, PSP, and many others. Let's take a look at Sonic Adventure 2, connected via Bluetooth and HDMI to the Legends Ultimate Mini. And here's Tekken 3 playing on the PlayStation emulator in RetroArch. We've reached the end of another video, so let's go over the things that I like about the At Games Legends Ultimate Mini. First off, the ability to rotate the display is innovative and easy to do. The controls do work very well, and the Mini is sized about the same as competing options, which may be a plus for some. And along those same lines, those competing options typically have far fewer than 10 or so games, and this one has 150 built in. Another very nice feature is the ability to expand the machine using a USB drive with CoinOps X and OTG. And you also have access to the online leaderboards and arcade net. And if you want to play pinball but don't have room for the Legends pinball machine, this is a great option. Now let's talk about the things that I think can be improved. I personally would love to see a trackball option. This machine would be great for playing centipede, millipede in a vertical mode, but Without a trackball, not so much. However, a swappable deck that includes a trackball would be great. But for only $100 more, the Legends Ultimate has a 24-inch display, a trackball, two spinners, and a second player control. Therefore, the Legends Ultimate may be a better value for some. And finally, the up and down directions don't work properly in vertical mode with CoinOps X, which is something I hope can be corrected soon. I hope you enjoyed this look at the At Games Legends Ultimate Mini. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to see more from Wagner's Tech Talk, please click the subscribe. And with that, I will talk to you very soon.